if you hear like a random kid, you know, I got four of them. It might happen. <laughs> no worries. If you if, if you hear random heavy breathing, I've got two pugs. So that's. <laughs> well, OK, so I love that. Look, nothing official is going on when people are like seeing this. We're talking about pugs and heavy breathing and some and maybe some crazy kid noises. I love it. That is everything that I wanted to do with this conversation. So. <laughs> to officially start it because that was beautiful i loved it i see everybody over here in the chat i can't wait for people to start flowing in um i'll tell you uh me and uh, well first jackson dickert thank you so much for being here man I, i'm inspired and every time that i watch anything that you're in dude i'm just i'm on, i'm dying it's hilarious oh thank you very much man I, thank you very much for for having me on it's awesome i think this is the this is the first uh like pern related thing i've i've done outside of ferns oh wow i feel yeah. honored then yeah that's what i'm saying i'm honored uh nobody just, else cared man no i'm just kidding uh, I, i'm doing something with um nicholas fuller in uh may i think so you guys love usually reached out at like the same time i have to say and i was telling my wife who by the way i'm gonna tell on her she's on the comments is bookish mama so boom right on there i'm full disclosure kind of guy i look my sleeves are gone and, you know, that's just kind of you can see my book is here. You know, I'm an open guy. So yeah. uh, I told on the wifey. She's here. Thank you, baby. Um, but I have to say I was telling her earlier because, man, I love the funny. I love the humor. I love the comedy. I love anything that has to do with, you know, books, fantasy, sci fi, that kind of thing, of course. But, man, when when I see the human side of somebody and just the small serious part of this conversation i'm going to get it over with and then we'll do some funny stuff man i have to say i appreciate anybody and everybody who sent me nice messages while i was laid up jackson you were one of those i just wanted to thank you man thank you so much that really encouraged me while i was down and i wanted to tell you face to face yeah man i mean listen uh, myself uh my whole family like we've we've all dealt with so much uh medical stuff you know it's it's never fun it's always miserable and like I, I don't think I've ever been in the hospital as long as you are. So I, I legitimately, I, I cannot imagine that would be really hard. So I had a lot it, of reading time. Yeah, well, and it's wild, you know, you were reading the whole time and, and you were like still like messaging people to like, let them know, like, don't let me know you're in the hospital. Just get better. You know, uh, <laughs> oh, man, uh, so, well, I, I, I mean, it's, you came back swinging too, like right on we're it here. So yeah. I just wanted to get that. I wanted not only just, you know, to tell you face to face, but let, you know, people people care about that human side of a booktuber or a, an artist or, you know, so that's kind of just my thanks to you. Um, but my my biggest reason, I would say, uh, you know, for me reaching out and just being um, just I love the channel. I love and, and then I, you know, as I've learned more about you, I love what you're doing in the, as a whole. And we'll get into that. And Bell, too. Thank you, man. Brian Bell. Wonderful channel. Thank you to, for uh, dropping by. Appreciate you. Um, but yeah, so again, I'm, I'm kind of running around the topic here, but I love laughing and I, I found it that it was harder for me to do that for a while. So finding your channel was refreshing. Um, so what, I'm going to kind of get into some things that I learned about you, uh, after, you know, watching that first amazing video again, we'll get into that too. You're a university of Tennessee grad with a degree in kinesiology. Would you tell everybody what that is? It's just the study of exercise science. They, they want it to sound a lot fancier than it really is, but it's <laughs> it's not. It's the study of how the body moves. That's it. And, and that, it's very interesting, but I find it even more interesting what um, yeah, you've led uh, in your life to do. Um, and you're part of this software that I recently was, I was actually gifted, like, uh, obviously, you know, the manuscript, like you, I got a, like a lifetime, um, unlimited manuscript. It was very nice Christmas gift. And, and I started using that before I even knew that. I'm, I, I told him he could say hi and he showed up. What's like, up? That's my son, Jackson. That's my very that's first awesome. baby. It's so nice to meet you, Jackson. Thank you. We, we need more Jacksons in the world. We're going to take over. That's right. Uh, so we had a quick interlude there. So um, chief marketing officer for this wonderful writing technology. Um, 
What's the name of it? And how did you kind of fall into that? Yeah, so it's called uh, Campfire. It's at mm. campfirewriting.com. Um, so I was, let's see, how old was I? I was, I guess, 21, I think. This was in 2018. Um, and I was studying kinesiology at school and I was taking all of the worst classes that you can take in college. And all the engineers are like rolling their eyes. I don't think that's actually true. I think engineers definitely had some worse ones than I had to take. But I did have to take organic chemistry Ooh, and anatomy tough. and physiology. Yeah, I mean, I was taking everything that I needed to, to take um, to go to school to become a physician's assistant or potentially go to medical school. Like, that's what I was preparing for. And that's kind of what I spent my whole life thinking that I was going to do. Um, and I got this job at the university library where they kind of just paid me to sit in a room and make sure, you know, nothing went wrong. It was very low key. I had lots of free time. So like I got paid to do, it was one of those jobs you get paid to just do your homework. That's, that's the purpose of the job at the university. And um, while I was at the job, like I did my homework. And then when I was done doing my homework, I played Hollow Knight and I beat Hollow Knight. And I was like, well, what do I do with my time now? Um, and so I was, I was looking for like side hustles. Uh, you know, I was, I was following like a lot of like finance guru YouTubers, which I'm glad I'm kind of out of the hustle culture phase of life now. But um, I was like, I was like, I should be making the most of this time. And I, I, you know, I could try like audio transcribing. So I tried audio transcribing while I was there. So I was like, I'm getting paid to get paid to do another job. It's genius. And you know, th that didn't uh, pay that well. Like, it just wasn't worth doing. Um, and so I ended up, scrolling on reddit one day and i came across this post of uh this guy who was like yeah i'm working on this um like software for uh screenwriters and like uh i i built it like what do you guys think i went and looked at it and i was like i have adhd this and so for context too i have a minor in creative writing because that's like always been the passion right the the md or the pa that was going to be what paid the bills but then um i vote you know would love to write full time right who wouldn't sure. it's great yeah dude. um so i looked at this and i was like i have adhd i have trouble keeping track of you know all the different things going on in a story at times uh this looks really cool i've never seen anything like it so i went and looked at it and i was like you know it's missing a lot of stuff that like writers need um you know i think there's ways that i can help make this better basically and so I reached out to the guy, um, we got to talking and um, eventually somehow I talked my way into getting paid a um, hundred dollars a week for the first two weeks uh, just to like work on like the marketing to try to help him sell it. Cause I don't think he was having a ton of luck. He was really focused on just making a cool, good thing. Mm -hmm. um, and since I, you know, had a good sense of, you know, where writers were hanging out online since I was one, um, I was able to help a lot with that. And so pretty quickly, we um, started selling more and more, ended up, um, you know, we we made it official, created an LLC, and uh, here we are today. So the, the lesson is absolutely just shoot your shot because you might just send a random message to somebody on Reddit and it changes your entire life. I mean, so... Uh, there's a few things that I'm going to touch on. And I'm, thank you for kind of diving into that, man. That's that journey that I found out I love hearing about because uh, it, it is almost cliche. Well, it is cliche. We hear it all the time, but it's it's true. It's uh, that journey to what we think we're going to do or that journey that we inevitably take uh, is, man, oftentimes my favorite part of interviews. So thank you for um, kind of diving into that. And I think it took real cojones to say look I, I really like what you're doing um but also and i can i can see how somebody who isn't open to and i'm not i'm just obviously uh, so who was first i'm gonna slow down the gentleman <laughs> that made the software who you uh reached out to or who reached out to you who, what was what's his name so his name is jason laura so at, at the time that i reached out you know i i wasn't reaching out because i wanted a job um, that wasn't really the goal. My, I, I reached out because I was like, this looks interesting and I've not seen anything that does this like this. Um, and I, I'd like to help make it better, you know? Um, yeah. So it's Jason, I, I'm putting myself in Jason's position and that's kind of where I was going with, uh, it's like somebody 
who you, so let me get this straight again. You reached out to him. I did. Yes. Okay. So you're reaching out to him and you're like, man, I really like what you're doing. Um, I'm, I'm a little more familiar uh, where with where uh, writers are hanging out. Uh, so the marketing aspect. And also, I think that um, you're doing this well, but here's how we can improve. That's a very humble uh, and informational and, and so valuable uh, person to have in your life, man. So uh, that's brave. Uh, that's maybe not always easy to do. Say, hey, I love what you're doing, but, um, you know, let these steps could make it better. So that's really cool, man. Um, I have to say, I've tried a bunch of uh, as an aspiring writer, I, it's funny I'm saying that because I am just at the very baby steps of this. And and you don't really realize that as a writer. And so, like, you try it and it's like, oh, wow, this is this is a process. And I had no idea what I thought this was going to be like. Um, so building softwares like Campfire, um, what are a couple others that are out there? Uh, Scrivener is a really big one. They've been yes. around for years and years. So I try, I think that was the first one I tried, of course. And then just like regular Word. I can't keep org enough, organized enough to just use Word. I know there's a lot of old school guys uh, out there that probably want to punch me. Uh, but, and, and I honestly feel like when I get on Campfire and I can organize my thoughts and, um, you know, list my manuscripts. Uh, and then there's character pages that go in depth uh, for somebody like me who has trouble concentrating as well, you know, I, all through school, just uh, knowing the subjects, but unable to test, you know, I can relate with you in the ADHD sense. Um, so I think what you're doing is very valuable. It's reaching some um, these people who are writing uh, in a passionate area. And uh, I'm, I'm amazed by it, really. It's, it's very inspiring. Uh, I may hold the next part even more, uh, even higher though. It's a quest for the golden plunger. My man's yes, an author. Sir. So yes, sir. we'll start kind of at the beginning. When did you find this love for literature? Um, kind of, I'll give you an example of kind of where I, what, uh, what I'm aiming for. So me, I, I did not read as a young man. Uh, I found my love for literature at 29. Where did that begin for you? I so far back that I, I couldn't put an age on it. I couldn't put a number on it. Um, I I think my we were a big movie family and especially a big Lord of the Rings family. Yes. And so I was absolutely allowed to watch Lord of the Rings at too young an age. I remember there was a little while I wasn't allowed to watch them anymore because I would have nightmares about Aragorn chopping my head off like he chopped Lurtz, Lurtz's head off. He was uh, a gangster. It, it was. And, you know, I, I had nightmares as like a four-year-old or five-year-old, however old I was. <laughs> Hold on. Are you younger than me? Uh, I'm 35 this year or 34 this year. Yeah. Yeah. I'm young. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. I thought we were going to be like the same age, but man, I've just proven to be the bald-headed old man. Sorry. Continue. <laughs> no, you're fine. You're fine. Uh, and so, I mean, we were we were definitely like the family that like every weekend we turn on Lord of the Rings and we just watch like we marathon the movies again. Um, and so that quickly, my, my parents capitalized on that. Well, I actually I think I was somewhat reluctant to start reading uh, the way that they got me into reading was they put a Game Boy in my hands Ooh. and uh, they gave me I got Pokemon Crystal. That was my first game. Yes. And I loved Pokemon. I loved the show. And um, as a kid, I was I, got, I kept getting stuck and wouldn't know what to happen, like what was going on. And they like forced me to learn to read through playing Pokemon, essentially. So that's kind of where that started, I guess. And then, you know, I started reading like The Hobbit and stuff later on. I think there was a year or I think just in elementary school, in the third grade, at least, um, I got in trouble for going to the library too much. Like I finished my Whoa. work. Yeah, it was. How dare you? This is, I I know it's one of these places where like I recognize the school system failed me in so many ways, because like I would finish my work, um, and I don't I don't think I was like smarter or anything else. I think I just wasn't being challenged very much, and so I'd finish my work really quickly for the day. And um, with ADHD, right? Like we like to gamify things. If you can, oh. like 
if you can say do this thing and you can have magic points uh yeah i want the magic point. so we literally had this program at our school called accelerated reader where you'd read a book from the library and then you take a test on the content of the book and uh you got points based on how well you tested and like on like what you read essentially and so with as somebody with adhd i was like this is incredible. So I would go to the library all day back and forth reading as much as I could to get those points as high as I could. Uh, Cause at the end of the like school year, you got to trade them in for like candy and toys and stuff. Heck and yeah. yeah, eventually my third grade teacher told me um, that I could not go to the library anymore. Cause I was going too often and I had to read the books in the classroom only because I was spending oh. too much going back and forth. So I read all the books in the classroom and I got all the way through the F's in the dictionary before she let me go back. Oh, so I love a couple things. Look, if you can kind of brag this, like not saying you are bragging, but I would like I got in trouble because I was in this, the, the library too much. What's up, guys? Like, what did you get in trouble for? Like putting gum in it's, people's hair? It's so sad. Like I, I was not like a bad kid, but I was always the class clown. Right. I always mm -hmm. knew. Kind of had to put like one toe over the line where I was kind of testing the waters, but not so far that, you know, anybody ever got hurt or, you know, anything like that. Um, so like it, it's not even a brag. It's the saddest thing I could like that I can think of is that a kid could get in trouble for going to the library. Like that's horrible. <laughs> you know, I think you're right. Like I think there's many different ways that we could kind of analyze that, but man, I, I agree with you. I, I feel like if my, my son comes home and he tells me he's got detention for just like wanting to go to the library too much, me and the teacher might have to have a couple of words. Like, what are you, where, where are we aiming for at this point? If, if we're kind of disciplining for, uh, you know, that type of behavior, which is very positive. Uh, but yeah, man, um, that's really cool because a lot of the times I hear those foundational stories, uh, like my dad read the hobbit to me when i was seven which are man I, I totally wished and i still wish that that was kind of how i fell into reading it wasn't uh my parents um wonderful parents i just they worked a lot and i just it wasn't something they pushed on me um they may have said a couple times like hey it's really good to read but they weren't doing it we didn't really keep books in the house uh, that's that sort of thing. So to find that later in life, I think there's two ways I look at it. Uh, when I hear a story like yours or somebody else who found it when they were young, the first, because my head tends to go towards optimism, uh, and I'm glad that I'm that way because lots of people aren't, but uh, the optimism in me goes, well, I, I get to read these books that I hear so many wonderful influence about for the first time. Uh, the, you know, a lot of people have already read, but then I find myself in the middle of like a review, whether it's like a recorded, which I haven't done many of, <clears throat> excuse me, or a written, uh, and I'm like, you know, the lack of experience and I've been told I'm wrong, but I feel like I I'll, I'll never get out of the stage where. I don't feel comfortable talking about a book. I don't know why. I know how it made me feel, uh, but for some reason I feel I have to be like super technical about it. Uh, this trope and uh, this character arc and, um, you know, this plot and this, uh, it, it, I feel like I, I put too much weight on my shoulders. So having that experience, I think is beneficial when it comes to reviews in particular, um, just from my experience. So I definitely enjoy those foundational stories. For uh, the quest for the Golden Plunger, how old were you when you started writing that and when uh, you published it? Well, really quick, I'll also just say, um, as far as like the, the review stuff goes that you're talking about, I would, I would say, and you didn't ask, but I'll say it anyway, the, the, the most important part about a book is just the way that it makes you feel. You know, that's, that's the whole point that's the reason they tell the stories in the first place is mm. how does it make you feel so you know it you don't have to be breaking down every trope or every character arc and getting really technical i think the most important thing is you know how did it make you feel while you were reading it and you know if if you were interested and engaged and you know you cried and i mean then 
you read a good book, right? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Fantasy Book Critic, man. Uh, one of the valued, wonderful human beings in this uh, community. Gosh, there's so many of them, though. There um, are. Amen hey, hey, here. Yeah, that's my guy. And, and I didn't even know. Like, I, I took – so I was having a chat with uh, John – Morrow, uh, Beth, uh, Tabler, and Mahir. And I, I really just, I had had previous talks with um, Beth and John. And I was like, you know, I need to have Mahir in here. I've heard so much uh, wonderful things about him. He's such a good I guy. I can't wait he's to have so, him back, man. He's, he's, he's a so wonderful nice. Dude. He is. And he, he has is. like super cool uh, Joe Abercrombie books that I'm like not jealous over or anything. Anytime <laughs> I see like the broken binding uh, editions of uh, Joe Abercrombie, because I have to say, I just got um, able to be in the subscription for broken binding. And I'm so happy. I can't wait. Uh, the first one's going to be uh, the lies of Lock Lamora. Uh, it's going to be so fun. But uh, anytime I see the, the Joe Abercrombie editions, along with many others. I'm like, oh, I wish I would have learned about that, you know, this list a long time ago. Um, his editions are much cooler, though, I have to say. So thank you for being here, my guy. And I can't wait to chat with you again. Um, so, <laughs> okay, so we'll get back into kind of what you do and some more serious questions. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a left turn. Oh, I was gonna say I I, I didn't wasn't planning on uh, dodging your quest of the golden plunger question too. Uh, oh, uh, you I, know what? My brain's mush. Please answer that first. I'm so sorry. Yeah, <laughs> go worry. into go into when you like started that and then published it. Yeah, so I I started that um, in college uh, while I was getting that that creative writing minor. I I started so I guess it was actually it was probably around 2018 because I had spent the summer of 2018 trying to write a fantasy novel, essentially. Um, and it was so bad. It was so bad. Was it man. your first one? Yeah, it was the first time I'd ever that's tried okay. to write a book. Yeah, right. And that's what, you know, I, I was writing it. And like, as I was writing it, I was like, this is excellent. And then like, I got to, <laughs> I think about a hundred pages in, and then I was like, time to go back and time to, you know, assess. What have I- Who's this George R. R. Martin dude? He got shit on me. Yeah, and then uh, I went back and read it, and I was like, this is not good. Uh, and so I, I was in my creative writing class at the time, and um, I was like, I asked my creative writing professor, you know, what should I do? This is terrible, but I need to have something for everybody to critique because my thing was coming up, and I was like, this is ter this is terrible. There's no point in having them critique this. This is a waste So it was an assignment. Yeah, yeah, it was okay. an, it was a, well. I had been writing it in advance because I knew in the fall that we were going to have this class where like we could submit lots of stuff to be critiqued. So I wanted to have a good bit of stuff like ready to go, it polished up good, and it was not good, and it was not going to get polished. Um, and so I asked him. I was like, "This just isn't good." And he he was kind of one of these like old school professors where he was not into fantasy. He did not like fantasy. Uh, there was me okay. and like one other guy writing fantasy in the class and he was kind of like this is not real literature uh <laughs> not really but I, yeah i think i think he wanted us to to really learn the foundational aspects of storytelling before getting into and then there were dragons um and so that's why his advice was he was like why don't you try writing something closer to home than this and i was a boy scout for many many years and ended up getting my eagle and i was like that's you know amazing and I, I like this is going to become a real shocker to you, Matt. So, so gird yourself, get ready. Apparently. But I, I like my brain just kind of naturally goes towards funny a lot of the times. And I would no. so, yes, it's true. I'm willing to admit it here on this live stream. It's and so, and so when, when he was like, write something closer to home, I was like, you know, I, no, ex I know everything there is to know about being miserable, a miserable teenage boy trapped in the woods at summer camp uh, and all the hilarious, you know, misadventures that happen uh, along with that. So that's when I started writing it. I, I really. So a couple things. Uh, it's funny when you've got a, a, a channel for a little bit. I don't know if you've already noticed, like you catch yourself saying the same things over again, like not necessarily repetitiously, but like I, I always like 
after somebody tells me a really good story, I'm like, a couple things. Anyway, I just noticed that all of a sudden in the moment. But a couple things. Uh, I like that you did what you wanted to do um, with writing uh, your first book as a, uh, a fantasy book and kind of taking that shot. And honestly, who writes their first book? And it's like, you know, I'm really liking how this is going. So, but also how you knew that you were going to be critiqued. And as somebody who wants to write, I'm thinking in my mind when I hear this from you, I want to find, and there's so many people now, you know, being a part of this community, uh, but say I wasn't. Uh, there's not a lot of people who maybe aren't in this community that are writing that aren't able to find that critique um, or maybe that honest critique. Sounds like this professor was quite honest. Uh, he wasn't afraid to tell you maybe how he felt about uh, the written word. No, not at all. I mean, and I think that's really important. Like that's probably the most important thing about a critique partner is they, Oof. you know, you're, if, if they don't tell you how it is and they don't, if they don't say the hard things to you, then you're going to hear them from reviewers. Right. Mm. So there, if, if you don't tell somebody, you know, this is bad or you don't have to say that, right. You can say, this is not working, you know, or you can find nice ways to put it. But like, if they're, if they're not telling you that you're going to find it out a much harder way. Um, so it, that's, it, it's important to find people it, that will give it to yeah. you straight. I, I heard somebody, I wish I could give them credit, but I don't remember who said it to me. Uh, it was like, you can be kind without being nice. Uh, it's sure. like you can give constructive criticism kindly. Yes. Uh, that may not be nice, um, but it, I don't think people are always looking, especially serious writers, uh, are always looking for a nice response. It's like, let's just be honest, because if you don't tell me, like you said, I'm going to self-publish a book or I'm going to uh, send this to a publisher, whatever the route uh, said writer is taking uh, and, and hear it eventually. Um, so let's use our time constructively and, and let's get to the bottom of it because I want to be better. Uh, I think that's a wonderful point, man. I'm glad that we covered that. Um, uh, so how old were you when you started it? I don't know if you said that. Um, I guess I, I was probably 20 when I started writing the quest for the golden plunger. Okay. And when you published it, I think I was 22 or 23. I think I was probably, I think I, th I think I was probably 23. That's actually really impressive, man, because, um, you know, there's those crazy people that are like, you know, I, I write a book a year, uh, or every six months. Uh, and, and Honestly, from watching your show, I found out there's a woman out there who what her writes very ambitiously. You said a list, and I was like blown away. I'd never heard of this woman, but kudos to her. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. What was her name, by the way? Uh, Corinne Tolado. <laughs> Dude, I one of the, the things, romance that, writers or something else. They are and the and the court stenographers. You hit a point that my mind had been on like for <laughs> years, like. So it's like, I, okay, we hear Brandon and Brandon Sanders and we hear Joe Abercrombie. How we're interested in how fast they write, right? Uh, right. Because we want to be like them. But look, nobody's got on uh, like the game, the writing game on lock, like a court stenographer. And, and right. it's funny, man. Like I heard you talking about that and I really was paying attention. I was like, here's a point that uh, I had naturally went a long time ago because. My mom and dad were kind of in the, uh, my dad was a firefighter. My mom worked, um, she was a dispatcher for the police. So I heard of how fast they were. Um, so that's where I went. I was glad you covered it. Um, thank you for covering your, uh, I, we'll kind of maybe dive in a little deeper into your writing process, but I, I'm glad you covered when you started and when you finished kind of the situation you were in, um, going into the quest for the golden plunger and how you ultimately took what you were familiar with. I think that's very important. We'll kind of get into that to a, uh, here soon. Um, but here was a question that my mushy mind went to before I, I, I heard your answer. Uh, how scared were you when oh, dude, Brandon I was, Sanderson threatened your life? Dude, I was, I was quaking in my boots. I was quaking <laughs> in my boots. I was in that man's lair. And he looked on at me. On his couch, homie. On his couch. And you know what? He's faster than he looks, you know. He's he's quick. You've never seen an adult man move so fast in your life. 
Oh. The man, he, he's he's built like a cheetah. <laughs> that's why that's why he wears the 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 suit jacket, so you can't tell. Oh, covering he's it built up. for speed. That's why he writes so fast. But it doesn't just extend to his fingers; it extends to his legs, to everything. I it's like uh, that's the first thing that you show on the video. I was like, oh my goodness. So I'm interested. <laughs> and then uh, I just love your demeanor. I was telling you a little bit before. Um, it takes lots of skill, guys, and and nerve uh, because I've tried it and failed miserably to like be funny and or like have that awkward moment and stare people in the eyes, dude. Look, Jackson is a he, he's got that steel nerve. Uh, he's gonna stare you in the eye to get that humor across, and I think that's hilarious. That's that's what I pull out the most. Um, <laughs> it's you, hilarious, man. of course. Uh, my guy David List, he does um, well. First, he's an author um, and does a podcast with me, uh, DB Rook, another self-published author, and Tom Bookbeard, who is uh, a reviewer and soon-to-be um, author. So, Violence and Vigilance. Uh, written by David List, and he says, long time no see, Matt, my guy. I'm so glad to be back talking with people. This is my favorite thing. Like, like, like I've got my list, like my family, you know, my wife, my kids. That's that's obviously the top of my list. But, like, um, hearing people and their human journeys, you know, particularly in this writing uh, community, and uh, whether it's reviewer, author, uh what have you. It's just so fun to me. And I could do it all day long. Um, and I had no idea. Like this niche, I started the channel. It's like, I'm just going to review a couple books here and there. I like to read all of a sudden. So let's just do some reviews. Um, but falling into talking with people, especially live, nothing's more human. Like my cameras no. died. Like my, my, everything's happened. Like if you think of it, it's happened. I've probably had a booger um, or two, you know, <laughs> Um, I've definitely like spilled drinks. So it's just, it's the most honest way to talk to people. Um, yeah, but so that's great, man. I'm guessing that you, how did you meet Brandon before I say, I, I'm, I was going to guess through your, your software that you, uh, market, uh, through, but is that true? Uh, yeah, more or less. Um, first David, thank you for, um, for, for the, the kind words about the interview. I uh, appreciate that very much. Um, yeah, so we got in touch um, with Brandon. We actually sponsored um, one of the episodes of his podcast um, and kind of got to talking through that way. And then um, we would run into each other. Basically, I would run into like members of his team, not run into Brandon, but run into members of his team. And um, just, uh, I guess, over the course of a couple of years, um, got to know them, and then they were in a bind um, for the Yumi and the Nightmare Painter book club. Yeah, um, they needed uh, somebody who you know was comfortable on camera and who could, who was, who knew a good bit about the Cosmere and Brandon's previous works. Um, and I happened to be at the right place at the right time, and I was like, I can do that. Uh. <laughs> and uh, so that's that's how I ended up being there to do the interview uh while we were there uh, they were like they were very graciously it was, i mean it was so kind uh, that they were like you guys can all have an opportunity to make a piece of content with brandon oh and, wow yeah and so i i Hell yeah yeah I, I did not realize that did not know that that was even going to be a thing until like that day um <laughs> and so all the questions that i had for brandon was all stuff that i cooked up uh, a couple hours in advance. Uh, so it was clever. It was, like the, the things that you. you go through um, and like, don't worry, I'm not like on this boat to like um, over talk somebody like these are legitimately my feelings. So like, if I say them, like take them, take it for word value. Like the way that you went through, like, um, you know, before you went through the pictures of, hey, I'm looking to better my writing, uh, which one of the, you know, um, uh, uh, inventions or whatever, these these writing uh, aids, if you will, uh, would you would you uh, recommend, Brandon? I'm like, oh, cool. 
let's learn about some new writing stuff that I'm going to buy. <laughs> and he breaks out like the, the boxing gloves and then like the extended, like mm. uh, articulate fingers. Yeah. Oh, that was wonderful. Dude, it just made me die. Um, so I see some wonderful comments over here. My guy um, from uh, Smoky Dude and my brain's mush, so I forget your name. Uh, Britain, my guy Britain. Uh, Mr. Dickert, is your name a reference? <laughs> no. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to answer, Between Two Fires by Christopher Buhlman. Answer that, my friend. Yeah, uh, so it's actually a reference to um, Zach Galifianakis did a uh, show called Between Two Ferns, and it's it's the same format where he would look at like Matthew McConaughey and say stuff like, Matthew, if you weren't so good looking, do you think you could even be an actor? Because you're such a terrible <laughs> actor. So like that's all you have going for you. And then the Perns is um, from Anne McCaffrey's Dragon Riders of Pern. And um, everybody's always, you know, joking about, how'd you come up with the name? Brandon came up with the name about 10 seconds before we started the interview. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, like, I wouldn't even answer that question. I just, I figured, yeah, because I knew it was between two ferns. Like, I'm a huge fan of Zach Galifianakis, but I had no idea that Brandon came up with that. Yeah, yeah, he is the pun master. There's no question about that. He's because he was sitting there and he was like, "What's this called, by the way?" I was like, "I don't know. I just came up with this two hours ago. I don't know what it's called." Uh, which is never, which is not something you want to have to look at Brandon Sanderson and say uh, he doesn't have a name. And he was like, "Well, hang on. How can we make this a pun?" And he, I kid you not, he thinks for like half a second. He's like, "Between two, he was like, okay, you go to my library, get two copies of, of Dragon Riders of Pern, and like the person like sprints away to go get it, and they come back with three minutes later, and they're in the background of that video. If you if you look very close, that is excellent. See me like yeah. without knowing yeah. that story, I'm like." <clears throat> He grew up reading Anne McCaffrey. I have not read any Anne McCaffrey myself, um, but I want to very soon. And that was just my preconceived like assumption, like absolutely wrong assumptions. And I'm so glad that you went into that because I never would have asked you that. I don't know yeah. why, but that's a great man. I love that. Brandon, thank you, man. Uh, I think that um, you are the pun master now. I may have to agree with uh, Jackson here. Um but that was a good question, uh, Britton, because I hadn't thought along those terms. But I have an unfair advantage um, just because I had been watching um, Between Two Ferns by Zach Galifianakis and knew that you, you articulate and, and mimic his, uh, his comedy very well. I love it. And I have to say, I, Zach does this like... Uh, who was it? Who's the chick that did um, the the woman? I don't want to say chick. That's kind of, but anyway, the one that did uh, Hunger Games. Oh, um, was it Jennifer? Oh, or... Yeah, Jennifer Lawrence. Is that it? Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't remember the the line exactly, um, but you guys should definitely go back and watch Between Two Ferns with Jennifer Lawrence. It is absolutely stellar. Uh, another good one is the Matthew McConaughey, but uh, moving on. Um, so some wonderful comments. Yes. Um, you know what I used to do when I first started is I wouldn't read these comments and I would throw them up. And a lot of the context is like between chatters and it, it, they really stumped me a, a few times, <laughs> I, but I, I love this. Kenneth says Jackson is very funny. and Okay. So you guys have met. That's wonderful. Uh, he was super kind to indulge me with the book uh, Chatter at Dra Dragon Con. That was a very recent um, expedition you went on. How did that go? Uh, so, yeah, that Dragon Con, that was um, in September. Um, and so that was good. Uh, that's the one, all, basically, all the videos from Jackson Ford all the way through Bryce O'Connor, I think, were all filmed at Dragon Con. I, I didn't step foot. And I mean, that's that's why they all have the same background, the same setup. I, I didn't even go to the con. Um, I went and hung out with people in the evenings. But I when I went to that con, um, I had no idea that I was going to be interviewing all the people that I was and just kind of started meeting people, talking to people. And then I would stay up half the night and spend the entire day writing scripts and researching these people to do those <laughs> interviews. So I, I never went to the con. Uh, I just hung out with people and then I'd go research and write. And 
I was wrong. wrong. So like Dragon Con, I knew it was last year. Um, the one that was just in Seattle. I don't know why I can't think of the name. Oh, the Emerald City. To, is that the one that was just uh, like a couple weeks ago? Yeah, I went to Emerald City Comic Con. Is at the uh, beginning of March. Yeah. Okay, so how I, that's I got the two mixed up. How was that, man? Because um, I don't remember why. I, it was right before I got sick, and I was like, I wish I could be there. Who was? Uh, who were some of the guests? Uh, man, there was a lot of like really cool people there. Um, the author of Divergent was there. The name escapes me right now. Um, yeah. Rebecca Yaros of uh, Fourth yes. Wing was there. Um, they, I mean, there was a lot of people. Terry Brooks was there. Django oh, Wexler. Wow. Um, Caitlin Starling. Um, Madeline Rowe. She was there. there Django was Wexler is one that um, is new on my radar to like pick up within the next couple months. Very yeah, excited I have, about that. Yeah, yeah. So I have not. Uh, just a, a real quick, because people who have watched me know this. But uh, just a quick um, rundown. I have never been to any convention. Um, I, and I have to, uh, somebody said, yes, David. Oh, Curran said it first. I was telling Jackson, I was like, you know, I was looking in my closet. I, was, I got out the shower. I was like, what am I feeling? I was like feeling them stone cold vibes. I, I'm going kind of backwards with, with that tire tonight. So thank you for noticing. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, where was I? lost track uh talk about cons thank you so yeah. i have not been uh to any cons and finding this love you know just a few year, few years ago and finding those authors and and kind of the genre and the niches within those genres that i like to read uh i, I had never really thought about going to the cons i'm hoping to go to dragon con this year um, me and my wife, you know, kind of both fell into reading about the same time. Uh, she wasn't a reader either. And I think she's able, like with her time right now, because at night she wakes up with the baby to feed her and she's got the Kindle. Uh, she actually probably reads more than I do at the moment. I'm very uh, jealous, other than the fact that I get more sleep than her. You know, there's that thing. But <laughs> no, we found the love at the same time. And I hope that we get to do, I know that our first con will be together, obviously, but um hopefully it's this year uh, are, do you plan on doing any conventions uh the rest of uh, 2024 oh, oh man are you kidding me i am i am traveling i think pretty much every month for the rest of the year except for november um i have a wow. i have a very very full schedule as far as cons and uh like author meetups and that sort of thing it's it's going to be exhausting it's going to be fun but it's going to yeah. be a lot. <laughs> so I'm I, I, not knowing the answer before I, you know, asked that question. That is very exciting. And I wanted to ask you, is it, does it have to do with your company uh, that you work for? Does it have to do more with your personal life? Um, it's, it's actually a, a, a decent mix. There's some stuff that's more um, campfire oriented. And then there's some stuff that's just I enjoy doing uh, Between Two Perns. It's obviously it's a very expensive show to produce because mm. um, like I, I've had really um, high profile authors who have agreed to do interviews, but they want to do them digitally. And like, I think digital works great for like something like what we're doing right now. We're just having like a conversation, but I don't think that the humor and the comedy plays as well. Um, it doesn't. Not in the same room. So that's, uh, that's kind of, yeah. Um, that's why I, I, I think the show to be good or, or as however good that it is, uh, it's it has to be like in person to, to be able to work. So, so again, I'm going to go back to my saying a couple things. Uh, I think that you're right, but not only that, you're willing to say and, and continue along that path because it's not the easy one. That's not the easy path. Um, it's not just an interview. Like um, I, for example, um, I'm going to go into what I was telling you behind um, backstage and how I really messed up, right? Because we, you, you're like, uh, I was hoping I didn't mess up uh, time zones. And it's like, oh, I got a story to tell you live. I didn't tell you backstage because uh, anyway, uh, 
the interview of my lifetime, um, the opportunity was given to me. Um, and when I say the opportunity of a lifetime, I mean a legend author that I had no business uh, talking with because of my lack of um, <clears throat> reading experience. But I recognized and have read a couple of his books but I did not worship this guy like um, a true fan of his does. Um, and I was an hour late. So I had agreed in my email with him, and I'll tell you his name in a second, uh, to do it at 8 like you and I did. And I'm checking my phone at 8.30 to get ready. And he's like, where are you? I am not happy. My whole stomach just like, oh, I did this thing, right? Raymond D. Feist. And, and I was just like, this guy's been writing for so long and he is a legend. And I mess up the time. With, I've never messed up the time with anybody else except the legend himself, Raymond E. Feist, which turned out to be um, one of my favorite interviews. He's one of the coolest dudes ever. He was uh, very nice. Um, he had some fans that were like tuning in early, right? And, uh, we're kind of banking on eight o'clock. So I get it. You know, these people are like all across the world kind of, uh, you know, and he doesn't do interviews. I can't find one uh, to date. So uh, that's just kind of shows you, you can make a mistake as a human recover and it still be a wonderful uh, experience. Yeah. Uh, the, the Paolini interview um, oh. that, that one, dude, same thing where it's like nothing has ever gone wrong filming one of these episodes before and with his for i the the mics i use are um the like road go to i think is what they're mm -hmm. called and so it's got like a bluetooth like receiver that connects to the camera and for whatever reason it just would not connect like they they wouldn't work uh and it had never happened before and it ended up making us 15 minutes late to start which um you'll if you watch the interview closely uh Christopher has two different cups in the interview. And that's because it was filmed in two different sessions because he had to go to a signing and I had to go to a panel. And then he was generous enough to make the time to come back to finish the interview. So stand up guy this, there too. I mean, that, oh. he did not have to do that, but uh, it was very. Common. So look, Christopher Paulini, I, you know, obviously this guy, and the baby's a little upset she'll get over it sorry guys no worries um so christopher paulini you know I, I grew up in a time similar i'm sure to the, the time that you grew up and it's like aragon like definitely at every single scholastic book fair i saw this blue dragon uh, on the cover right and not until i searched his goodreads and amazon reviews did i really digest how Many people have read his books. It's astronomical, like yeah. millions of reviews, which uh, anybody familiar with, uh, you know, a self-pub author or even a um, traditionally pub author and the, the amount of reviews that they get for a typical book, this dude is just a legend. So, um, yeah. you know, from Brandon Sanderson to Chris Paulini to Baltry, dude, I think that he's a legend. I think he's he's an ambitious writer too, and uh, not only that, you guys have the exact same haircut. No, I'm just playing. We do. <laughs> no, we do. We do. <laughs> and and we're, we're both rocking the the messy hair look. <laughs> works 100. percent Look, I, ever since I was 16, your boy's been shaving. I was telling um, Jackson guys who are who's listening. Um, I had the Stone Cold vibes. And let's just face the facts. That is not a new vibe. Uh, I remember graduating high school and just having like a, the receding hairline and had to make that had to make that decision. Like, what am I going to do? Have this like on the sides and look 47 when I'm 19 or I'm just going to just be a man and just shave it off. And you know what? I'm rocking it, man. You're <laughs> rocking it. <laughs> but um, no, I love that. So Baltry's. Baldry, Baldry, I, I, you know, I'm confused on how to say his name, but um, I read uh, Legends and Lattes and, you know, really enjoyed it. 
And I thought your two um, chemistry, the chemistry between you two was really good. Uh, he was open to your kind of humor and uh, kind of if what he was saying during the interview was true, I think that um, that's a huge honor for you because, you know, he talks about how he has imposter syndrome and, you know, along with that comes anxiety and, and, and similar feelings. And honestly, it looked like the most natural conversation. It, it really was. That was one I enjoyed a lot because he kept me on my toes. Oh, like really? He, yeah, oh, yeah. He gave because he was given the chaotic energy right back. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, his was was definitely one of one of the more fun ones to record because, yeah, I mean, he he's an insanely talented guy. He's done, you know, between the audiobooks, he's been a successful like game developer. And then now he's a successful writer, too. I mean, he's. The guy is unreal and he's, and you know what? He's a super nice guy. Like so nice, so accommodating. Uh, he's great. He's great. It I look, can't say it's look like a black. Out. I'll take, he co-authors, I'm, I'm slipping my mind right now. Again, um, he co-authors with a gentleman, I believe uh, it's on my list of books to buy, but dude, I'm so excited. Like, um, I wish I could remember the, I'll have to look it up. Um, but he, I, I believe that's a lit RPG series. And I'm really excited to dive into that. Cause the only book I've read, really the only experience I've had with, um, Travis is, uh, uh, bookshops and bone or, um, legends and lattes, which really enjoyed it. I did. It was a nice, um, what is it? A palate cleanser. Uh, yes. Yes. It, it, absolutely it was, was fun. And it was a it was a fun take because you kind of cover this in your interviews. You're like, look, Travis, I um I was really enjoying your book for like the first few sentences, and, and it's so <laughs> true. Like he, he starts out pretty good, and well, I, I'd say it starts out it, it finishes well too. It's a wonderful read. What I mean is, it starts out like a typical uh, right. a fantasy book would, and quickly um uh, takes a left turn into something just as wonderful, but just in a little bit of a different tone. Um, but very inventive, very creative, very imaginative, and something I think that wasn't done as well as he did it until he did it. Uh, yeah. So huge props to him. Um, so what are some goals for your uh, your channel coming up? And this can be anything. Oh, some goals for the channel. Um, well, so um, pretty here pretty soon, I'm going to put out a video kind of talking about like kind of what's next for the channel. Because um, even though I've got three interviews like i could have just kept going at the same cadence that i have been going um i'm right now talking with another um youtuber um which i i probably won't say their name just because we're, okay. we haven't we haven't signed uh, like a contract yet uh so oh. I, I you know it's not, nothing set in stone yet but right now we're we're talking about um hosting the next season on their channel because they've got um a, a bigger viewership than I do basically. Okay. And um, they, they like the show. And so, I mean, that would be a really cool way to kind of um, get it out there more and, and oh. um, um, get some more eyes on it. And, and cross pollinating sort of is yeah, some yeah. of the finest things you can do as a YouTuber, man. Like that's something I figured out not only just like, as far as um, you know, the things like the numbers, as far as, views which i have not hit anything as far as my goals um but what i have found is those relationships uh are much more meaningful you know talking with you like uh, is is something i've been wanting to do for a while or talking to um mike from mike's book reviews like crazy huge inspiration to me and, and you know talking with him uh it kind of just you forget about the numbers or at least i have for the time being just because i haven't hit those numbers that i want to yet uh but it's very rewarding like these people you kind of look up to um that have been doing it for a little while it's I, i've just personally found it rewarding um so i'm really excited for you man um and can't wait to to kind of witness uh what's next for you that's that's very exciting yeah, I, I totally agree. Uh, I, I would definitely say like it's it's 
all this stuff is like a labor of love. You know, we do it because we enjoy it. We do it for the for the intrinsic value. Now, would it be nice if the videos got enough views to pay for the plane ticket to go do the interview in the hotel room Word. that's necessary? Like, yes, that would be that would be nice. But um, realistically, like, I do this because it's fun. I, I do this because I like the art that I'm creating and I'm proud of what I'm creating. And I've got a bunch of other silly, dumb, stupid book oriented you know comedy stuff that i'm thinking about doing so outside of perns so we'll, we'll that's see what fun, happens. Man. that's super fun so uh i kind of so your goals kind of just uh continuing to find wonderful people to talk to and doing it the way that you know you want to do it i like yeah, that you're yeah. sticking to that yeah, I think that's a good way. You put it better than I did, for sure. <laughs> that's a good way um, of thinking. Of. So I have to say uh, a couple goals that if somebody asked me one, and the reason I'm covering is just because uh, my guy, Mahir, he, he says, one of my dreams is to watch Jackson interview uh, Joe Abercrombie because that interview would be fire. <laughs> Look, knowing his writing and how witty and how, like, laugh out loud, wake my wife up at 4 a.m. while I'm reading his books he is, combined with you, I have to agree. And is that you know, it, it's, the, it's something that would be really cool if it happened. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I, I have not spoken to Mr. Abercrombie yet, but I, uh, I think that the opportunity to speak with him may be coming up. All right. So, so <laughs> uh, I, and people who, and Mahir knows this, uh, and I kind of was talking about it earlier, like he would probably be the author or no. So Joe Abercrombie would be right. Just right. I'm not, I'm talking just one position lower than the next person. The person okay. that got me into fantasy the person that, that inspired me to make this uh, channel and look more into my ancestry, Mr. John Glenn. Just oh, man, oh. I I would I would love to to interview uh, John Glenn. Um, oh. <laughs> Mahir said, "Come to Glasgow and make it happen, dude." Mahir, what if I told you I'm going to Glasgow? That's exciting, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. dude. I so. Okay, so real John quick. Gwen's amazing, though. He's amazing. Uh, yeah, his... Um, I'm not familiar yet. I just bought Malice uh, with his older... Uh, not that it's really old, but his, his first uh, published works. Um, I, I, I bought the audio book. I got the book. I can't wait to dive into it. But I started with the Bloodborne um, Blood Sworn. <laughs> I've been playing way too many video games. <laughs> uh, Bloodsworn um, saga, and you know, seeing this third, the Fury of the Gods cover is just fire, dude. Not that I like expected anything less, but he puts scale as far as like he always puts a human. Like mm -hmm. if you guys look, he'll put a little bitty human to show you the massive scale of this uh, this uh, monster on his cover, and I love that. And it reads that way; it does. It's epic, uh, and I. I tweeted it and I tweeted it as a joke, but I mean it. I think I think the snake should be bigger on that third <laughs> cover. It should be bigger. Just make it yeah. absurd. Yeah. Hey, make it I, bigger. I, I, right. I, I, so it's an amazing I'm cover, to, dude. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that it's a snake. So that's like the ninety percent consensus in my mind. But I'm like. <laughs> Knowing John, there's some other like uh, Norse mythological creature that looks like a serpent that probably has like two legs and like, well, I won't go there and like, um, you know, <laughs> something else. And, and it's like I, I have to read the book to to understand what this is. But, um, you know, I, I, I saw it as a snake. So I'm there. He is my guy. Current. Look at you, dude. Um, I like that. I, now, see, I don't know um, as far as what you're saying is true, but I'm going to trust you. Uh, cause he's, that sounds right. No, he's, I think he's talking about you. Is he talking about you being, are you talking about oh. me? Oh, I, I could. So I know for a 100% fact that all of my ancestors, well, I say all, 
Um, my my great 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 grandfather and grandmother came from Denmark. So like, cool. there has to be some like um, axe wielding Viking on a uh, a snack, if you will, uh, somewhere in my inside. I mean, I I you know how many times I've walked into a room and are like, look at that Scandinavian bastard over there. I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> And now I get what they're saying. And yeah, yeah. I'd have to agree with them now that I know, you know, uh, it's very good. So he meant, uh, I'm talking about the snake being one of Loki's. Oh, oh, yes. Okay. Jormungandr, right? Jormungandr? Yeah. I, I haven't finished Hunger yet. Uh, I've, I've finished Shadows. I haven't finished uh, Hunger of the Gods. But it's one of those, like, uh, books that I'm savoring at the moment. Uh, just because I know that when I'm done with it, because... Let's let's just face it. When I started it, there was no plans for uh, like the release of this cover, and I did not want to finish it and it be like a. And I hate to say this, sorry, George. I respect the hell out of you, brother. But we've it's just a term that I'm going to use that I think people understand. Uh, like George R. R. Martin, you know, maybe because I, I know a lot of personal issues that John has went through that I would totally understand not writing through. Uh, so I didn't know when the next one was coming out. So I was kind of savoring it. So to see the next one coming out, um, and he kind of touched on uh, his personal situation uh, when he posted that cover himself. Um, but mad respect to John and anything that he has went through because uh, it's enough to, to drop any man to his knees uh, for sure. So mad respect and uh, love your writing, John. If you ever see this uh Absolutely respect you and love your writing. Um, <clears throat> so as far as you, uh, as far as far as your writing <laughs> goes, um, do you have any immediate plans to uh, begin another book, or are you in the middle of any um, writing at the moment? What's going on with that? Yeah, so I'm actually uh, wrapping up edits on my next book, which is about it's coming out to be about 111k words. Um, and yeah, edits are almost done. And then I, I think I'll, I'll send it out to some people and, and get some feedback like we've been talking about, get some feedback on it. And then, um, after that, yeah, I'll have to decide, you know, do I want to, to, uh, go self-published or traditional? And I'm still, I'm still weighing it. Uh, I, I friends with a lot of trad authors who have mm -hmm. plenty of horror stories and I'm sure. friends with a lot of indie authors who have plenty of horror stories so it's kind of picking the lesser of the two evils i guess i think it's um i think i i really respect your answer man like uh talking to both of them like um myself it's it's one of those personal journeys like it's different for every author in so many like various countless ways <clears throat> meaning like I've talked to authors who have written their first book or heard, not necessarily always talked to, um, guys like uh, Joe, Joe Abercrombie, uh, his first book, just knocking it out of the park. At least that's from my understanding, the first law, the first book, The uh, the Blade Itself. Um, and then, you know, I talked to guys like uh, Ryan Cahill, who uh, just, I, I, I've, I'm absolutely obsessed uh, with his books, I'm I'm loving it. And it's not just because of the hype. Like uh, I, I'm may more, maybe more of like uh, I have to be proven to, because the hype's gonna you know make me feel certain ways. So I kind of take a step back and look for it myself. Be critical, and I'm absolutely just love his books. Um, but yeah, it's different for everybody. And <clears throat> I think kind of saying that you know you as a writer is is very honest. Um, do you have a preference if if you were to guess right now which way you would go? Do you think you're going to submit it to um, traditional publisher? Do you think that maybe going self-published uh, uh, sounds better to you or you can't say at the moment? Um, I hate to say um, I can't say. That feels like a like a cop out. Okay. Um, it It is tough because you know, querying is soul crushing, you mm, know, uh, I've heard. It, it's, it's like exhausting. You, 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 a lot of, you know, agents, you have to 
tweak things to get them a certain way, or they'll have a, a random specification that a lot of the other agents don't. And those things, those, these little changes, they build up and they take a lot of time. So, um, realistic. That's a realistic answer. I, I'm digging it. I, I like the honesty, and I can tell you thinking about it, and and I'm sure that's a really hard one. Yeah, it is because because that's what I mean. I've been, I've been thinking about it every step of the way through sure. through writing and editing this book um, on on which way I'd like to go. And I think you know the thing that's really nice about indie is you you are so in control over everything, and that's all the trad people like that's the, their big complaint, just not having control. Yeah. But at the same time. I, I have so much going on that it would be nice to have the help doing it. Right. And sure. I think, I think that's a big part of it for me is it's like, dude, these, I mean, you know, these videos, you have to, I have to travel for them and then you travel for them, research for them, shoot them, edit them. And then public, like, that's a lot of time. And none of that has to do with my writing. Yeah. Much, so, much more. Um, much more in depth than I would ever consider doing. Um, and that's huge. Like the, I, and I considered this not first with your channel. Cause I had watched this, the one I'm speaking of previous to your channel, but I think most currently of your channel, when this topic comes up, if this makes sense, um, the in-person interviews, I had always wondered like how, how much more weight that puts on um, the creativity or, you know, just the process itself, talking to people. Um, and I, I hear I've got that answer and, and uh, kudos, man, because I, I love that you're keeping it that way. I love that, um, that that's the way you started. And that's what I love. And I know that so many other, well, the last I checked, what, like 91,000 people, um on that that brandon sanderson video i just uh and i know you're just only going to grow from here on man it's just it's really exciting to talk to you and and um grab you before everybody's swamping you with messages because i'm gonna throw <laughs> the video up when you're huge and be like hey i talked to that guy and and you know <laughs> but that's cool man I, i'm on your I'm, I'm on your team is what i'm saying so that's really fun and, and it's cool to find channels like that too because just like anything, you, you come across some like fives or sixes, but then you find ones that uh, really, again, kind of what I talked about at the beginning, hit you on that human level. And and that, that's really what I'm saying uh, that I love about the channel, man. So when you're writing yourself, are you a pantser? Are you an outlier? So for forever, I've said that I'm a pantser. Right. Because I'll I'll start and a lot of times I'll have like a character or, you know, a, a, some core idea that I'm writing around and then I'll start going. But the problem is it, it, this is a twofold problem for me. Um, it is the most interesting for me to pants because my ADHD brain, if I plot it, my brain's like, you did it. Good yes. job. No reason to write it. You're done, dude wrap it up um <laughs> but the but when i'm pantsing like this most recent one i got like 50 or 60k words in and realized like it wasn't working and i mm. needed to com basically completely revamp some of the the core things are the same the original book was about florida man like like florida man from the headlines uh, yeah. that like an like an ideological myth of like why <laughs> those headlines happen okay and um the story changed drastically. I, I went back and I kind of plotted it all the way through, which made writing it a lot less fun and like engaging for me to do. Um, but I think it ended up coming out as a cleaner draft. So I think for my next project, I'm just going to try plotting from the beginning, just setting a good routine and sticking with it and just chugging along until it's done. So I've said I'm a, a pantser for years, but I think I might be a plotter. We'll see. Okay. Uh, I love that answer for a couple of reasons. Um, you know, obviously, well, maybe not obviously to anybody that hasn't like been down that, that road, like finding that inspiration as an adult and just being a head over heels for it now. Um, to want to write that is, uh, 
I want to be able to do and and have people look at my written word the way that I look at my favorites, right? I think that's all of our who aspire to write's goal. And I was like, you know, Stephen King's a pantser and he's the OG. Um, there's some other guys like um, there's a self-help author who I'm sure you've heard of, um, John Palladino. And he wrote uh, The Tragedy of Sedane. He, he's finishing it right now, the third book. And he's a, a perfect mix of like Joe Abercrombie and George R. R. Martin with some his own like uh, unique spin on things. And he does POV chapters, which I've fallen in love with. I absolutely love a POV chapter book. Um, and and the, the reason why I think is because you learn maybe at least I did like trust the author and, and by the three quarters of the way through the book, you're like, Oh, I was confused for just like half a second, but all of this makes so much more sense now that I was a little kind of guessing what was going to happen. Um, yeah. Rob J Hayes. He's another one, man. I just got the God eater series on ebook. I, I can't wait for the first Kickstarter I ever, um, backed by the way. Um, but yeah, I, I, I was like, to take myself serious after pants, I didn't have to write 60,000 words, uh, Jackson. It was like two pages. And I was like, look, I can never keep track of what the hell I'm talking about if I do not keep it at least somewhat coherent on uh, an outline. Uh, so I'm very much an outliner um, with the creative freedom to like, so what I mean is I, I want to outline just enough to where I know what's going on, what's going to happen, how it's going to end. Uh, but with the creative freedom to kind of do my own thing in, in the middle, um, like create the way it's getting there. Uh, and I think that creative freedom I had to keep within my style as far as uh, the interest that I have for writing uh, to keep that alive. Um, so I, I love your answer, man. It just didn't take 60,000 words. It was it was pitiful. For me like um, it was like two pages and i had to reread and i'm like okay matt um when you're at like 70 60 50 000 words uh you can't just reread in in a single setting what you've done prior uh you've got to write some stuff down in fact you have to write down mostly important plot parts or or else matt your brain's going to be mush so yeah uh, i relate with you I love that. So <clears throat> getting towards the end, man, um, I, I, I want to say too, my voice, I don't know why, but all of a sudden it's kind of like uh, taking, it, it's, it's like stabbing me in the face here. Um, but I, good thing, I, I'm at the last few questions, so that's okay, guys. I'll be recouped for tomorrow night. Um, if you could read, you know what? I'm not even going to say one because that's like impossible, like even to a new reader like me. Um, Maybe one, two, three, whatever your mind comes up with. If you could reread for the very first time um, a book or a couple books, do you have any uh, that you would just be ecstatic to do so? It would probably be the Mistborn trilogy. Like those, they blew my mind because I think one of the one of the things that Sanderson does such a good job with is he will um it's like you're going along and you have an idea of what the world is you have an idea of where things are going and you might even think you know like what the twist realistically is going to be and like it's like the whole time your your world has been this straight line that is the plot and it's like okay i see like what's happening and what's going on here and then for me like multiple times during each like Mistborn book, it was like the world would go from one dimension to suddenly it's like, okay, we're, we have more dimensions now. Like if the world <laughs> is bigger, it's more complex, it's more interesting and it makes sense. Um, like when you read a mystery novel, there's like this type of mystery novel where the whole point is that it's fair to the reader where the reader can figure out who did the crime without the like uh detective you know explaining it all like you could okay. put it together feasibly not every book is like that and a, one thing that i really liked about mistborn was 
and I'm I am uh, infuriating to watch movies with. Uh, I, I know <laughs> Brandon Sanderson is too, but I think my fiance can attest. You know, ten or fifteen minutes in the movie. I usually know how things are gonna go, or you know, you've ruined it. Yeah, yeah. I, I can I can usually figure it out in advance. Um, it's it's part of the fun for me is, is to figure out you know how is this gonna happen. Sure. And so, Mistborn was one that consistently I was never able to pin down, but it always felt fair. It never it, mm. it was like the tidbits were there every step of the way, um, but like. I just did not put them together correctly because it was like so creative and interesting. The actual solution, mm. so Mistborn, easily Mistborn, the series. So I, I'm. There's many series like this too. Like, but I, uh, you know, talking with people, I get, uh, you know, hearing what you have to say about Mistborn definitely puts um, reading that like a little higher on my, a lot higher on my list. Like, I've got the audio book. Like, I'm ready to go. Uh, to kind of do like an immersion read. I've also got uh, The Way of Kings that I've heard uh, just wonderful things about that I can't wait to read. But, you know, I'm not versed on Brandon Sanderson. You know, I know he's an ambitious writer. I know so many people adore him. He's known for the Sanderland, so the, the endings, kind of what you're saying, like everything coming together in a way that you never kind of put together. Uh, so, yeah, thank you, man, because... I'm very excited to dive in and, and, and understand the hype, right? Uh, because I have to say, I have so many people as far as like close friends in this writing community that I don't necessarily, uh, on a personal level, get to relate with Brandon Sanderson. Uh, so to be there, uh, I'm really excited. I don't know why I've waited so long. Maybe I'm the type of guy that's like, um, oh, so many wonderful things. I'm going to get to these first so that like, uh, I can really enjoy that then. Um, and then I just never get to something. Uh, so that's higher on the list. In fact, that's going to be within the next couple months. I'm really, really excited. Yeah. Um, uh, storm stormlight is excellent. It's so, so good, but I, I definitely would say start with Mistborn. It's a, a little bit more accessible of a place to start. And, um, I absolutely am a huge fan of, of all his stuff. Um, you know, it's, he's not for everybody. There's, there's plenty of people out there who will say, you know, I'm not a Sanderson fan. That's okay. But I'll also say um, I'm a huge fan of his stuff. And I DNF Mistborn like three times before I was able to get into it. Man, that's and, so like, that important was, to tell people. That was, yeah. And that was the first, that was the first um, Sanderson book that I'd ever tried reading. And, but like I kept hearing good stuff. I liked the I, like the concept of the magic system a lot, um, and so I kept coming back. And I did the audiobook, um, mm. and it was like I kept just getting stuck. It was just not happening fast enough. I, I wasn't getting sucked into it. So, you know, it's like people recommend The Office, and they're like, mm -hmm. yeah, "Man, you just got to get to season five, and then it gets good." <laughs> Mistborn gets good. You just got to get to like you know chapter like just a little more than like 10 percent of the way through uh and okay it, it starts picking up fast so i'm yeah well i don't know the percentage but like uh well i couldn't episode. even tell you really like yeah so i couldn't even really i know that some bad things are happening as far as the beginning of the book like there's slave type things going on and there's lots of dust um, and then like something happens and they kind of have to leave where they're at the beginning. And that's how new I am into the Mistborn. Like they're just now kind of taking off from this initial terrible spot that I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Uh, so, so I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm, I'm, I'm getting closer to where I think you are saying that it starts to get good. So I'm really excited. And honestly, like the blade itself and, you know, they called Joe Abercrombie, Lord of Grimdark. Look, I have read many, many darker books, um, many darker books. And, and although he's like Lord something, I don't know if he's necessarily Lord Grimdark. Like um, I would say John Palladino is definitely darker than him. 
Um, you've got Malazan, in which I have not read, that I'm assuming is much darker than than Joe Abercrombie. But what Joe does so well is, uh, you know, now of course we've all heard it is the character writing. It's just, it's phenomenal. It's like, you know, it, the dialogue is all I need, and I I can tell who's character that is and it's uh it's really fun and i feel like the, well the reason i brought this up if i didn't give him as an author uh that time to kind of prove that to me you know by reading further i would feel the same way about joe that i think that you're trying to say uh give uh brandon a little bit further of a chance and you're gonna love it and 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 that's exciting to me so thank you for letting me know that yeah um yeah. so uh I think I want to finish with this. Like, what's up with you wanting to write a man ray? Dude, they're the <laughs> coolest. They're the coolest creatures in the entire world. Uh, I have so much manta ray paraphernalia uh, around here; it's ridiculous. But like, have you ever seen them swim? Yes, they're, they're, I've they're, touched them. I've petted them. Yeah, yes. they're freaking Dude. magnificent. They uh, are, they're and they're not like, going to sting you, right? Uh, no. No, nope, that's not right. Manta rays. Those are stingrays. Manta rays yep, those are stingrays. Manta rays uh, are, do not have barbs. I was thinking before this, and I've just proven myself wrong. If you've ever watched the show, uh, now I may be still wrong, so people don't fact check me or do and tell me, because I would actually rather you do that, tell me that I'm wrong and, and I can do the right research. But there's a guy. His name is, uh, and I'm going to say it in a British accent. And no, I'm not making fun of you, but that's how I, his name is Jeremy, Mo, Jeremy Wade. And that's the only way I can think of him because he does river monsters on. Oh, yeah. Um, it, dude, he's pulled up. It was a stingray, but I'm assuming, and I might be wrong, that manta rays get similar size. This dude's over and, and he only does fresh water. He doesn't do salt water. He doesn't do oceans. Uh, and he pulls like. With his own two hands, with his own, I mean, it's obviously a heavy-duty rig, but we're not talking a machine or anything. This, this stingray up off the bottom, and if you can imagine, a stingray suctions itself to the bottom. It's flat, right? And he, you know, he gets the hook in, and he pulls the stingray up. Dude, it's the size of what you would consider uh, a, a UFO to be. Like the thing is like 15 feet by 15 feet with a stinger that's the size of like my whole entire arm. And wow. it's incredible. Now, I don't know if manta rays can get that big, but if they do, you can definitely ride one. I don't think they get quite that big. I mean, they get pretty big. And I think, mm -hmm. I think just big enough to where it's still feasible that I can ride <laughs> one one day. But I want I want to do so ethically. You have to yeah. do your manta ray riding ethically. So I, I have to there's <laughs> steps. There's things I gotta figure out. I have to uh, I've got That's plans. Amazing. Matt, I've got plans and well uh, riding a manta ray is involved. So you know kind of ending with a couple things here. I'm on your team as far as you writing. Like I'm definitely gonna read uh the quest for the golden plunger. Like, there's no <laughs> Thank doubt. Thank you very like, much. <laughs> 100%. Like, I'm going to do a review on that for sure. And I'm also oh, going to need, you. like, a book plate. Because, like, oh, I need yeah. you on. Dude. Yeah, I need I need your signature. Yeah, I hold this very happy high. To. Permanent spot. <laughs> um, on, on the I build my own shelves. So, like, I make room for people. I'm making room wow. for Jackson. And, That's awesome. <laughs> um, so, that, along with, like, your channel, like, you, your boy... I'm always going to be on your side uh, as far as that goes. Oh, Ithra, that's wonderful. I love that you love uh, somebody in the chat knows what the hell I'm talking about. Jeremy Wade is a gangster, dude. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so yes, 100%. Um, yeah, so I, 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 I'm a Jackson fan and, um, you know, just thankful that you uh, would agree to come on my little show and 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 uh, let me kind of pick your brain for a little bit because it's been so much fun, man. Uh, I, I'm sorry I kind of lost my voice like halfway through. I've kind of had to struggle through it, but um, I got the questions in that I wanted to ask uh, Jackson Dickert, and and I'm just thankful, man. Uh, I love what you're doing. Continue it, and man, I, you've got a fan. Dude, thank you so much. I, I really appreciate all that. I, I appreciate you know you you having me on and everything. Uh, it's it's been a lot of fun. Uh, it's it's 
I think the th definitely the thing that I enjoy just most in general is just getting to, to talk with other people about like storytelling. Like that's yeah. the listening to people talk about storytelling is the thing that gets me like fired up to go write. And then, you know, just getting to sit and talk about it. Like that's the thing that makes all the, the dopamine in my brain go, go. Yeah. Go so, I get it. Um, like uh, that's incredible. And I'm, I'm glad that you have that, that want for um, the story time because, you know, I just didn't understand it. I didn't. I had no idea what it was about, why people enjoyed it. And I'm so glad I'm on the other side of that now. And people like you, man, just kind of, uh, you know, drive that home even further. So um, once again, uh, I appreciate you guys as I start my um, my venture back on uh, my channel. Um, you know, kind of, it's almost, you, you take a little bit of time off and, and um, you, you kind of have to, say, Hey, I'm back because people are used to seeing you every day. Um, so help. Thank you for, uh, helping me say that, that I'm back. Um, and I will, uh, continue what I'm doing. I hope to see that you continue what you're doing for you guys that were, uh, here live. I absolutely love you and it's amazing. And I always love the comments, uh, makes my life, uh, so fun. And it's, it's truly what I love. I love doing this, um, for those who watch in the future, <clears throat> excuse my voice, um, I, I appreciate you as well. Uh, leave your comments, uh, you know, maybe some people who you'd like to see me interview. Uh, I had a good schedule before, like, being laid up, and now I've kind of had to remake that because I had to cancel a bunch. Um, Jackson's been absolutely accommodating, so I appreciate that. Uh, but anyway, uh, leave in the comments some people you'd like to see uh, on the channel because – I would love to reach out to them and um, we will see you. Of course, like, subscribe, share. We have to say all that YouTube stuff, right? Uh, all the YouTube or else, stuff. And, or else nobody will ever see it. Uh, tomorrow is with a uh, no, uh, another booktuber who uh, he started a channel a little while back. It's kind of new, uh, but I'm really enjoying it. He he gets to the point. Like there's, there's booktubers who I watch for. Um, qualitative um book opinions and then there's people who i wa watch for entertain entertainment along with those opinions um and he's really good at it he's been reading for a while um cameron from uh nerd book review uh he also drives a tractor all day which is like i was like do you live next door because where i live in ohio it's like nothing but tractors corn and soybeans uh oh, anyway wow. so tomorrow 8 p.m eastern uh, with Cameron from Nerd Book Review. Um, like, share, subscribe. I've had so much fun talking with you, Jackson. Um, thank you, your uh, family, for letting me borrow you. It's been truly um, an honor. So um, I'll have you back on in the future. And uh, I can't wait to see what you do next. We'll talk soon, okay? Thank you very much. Yeah, sounds like a plan. And uh, be sure to buy little Jackson all the all the books that he wants. You know, Dude, get, get him oh, all the books yes. he wants. That's the most the first book thing. that I'm going to read him when he's able to comprehend. To yes, exactly. Yeah. I was like, uh, the first book I will read him, and I've tried already. Yes, I know. He's five. I tried when he was three and four to read The Hobbit. Yes, I know. Um, but that will be the first I read him. When I do, he's going to be a force uh, to be reckoned with. His imagination will uh, blast out of, you know, he's going to come up with a lot of stories. So I can't oh, yeah. wait to do that. Um, hail to the Jacksons. And, uh, we, yes, we will see you tomorrow night, guys. Thank you again, Jackson. See you guys. Thank you for having me.